الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته We continue studying the book of عمدة الأحكام and we are still in the chapter that deals with Tahara and as a reminder Tahara means purification, purity and it has two meanings one physical which is you have to clean and remove that from your body, from your clothes and from the place you're praying in and one is moral, something we cannot touch or see and this is major such as being in the state of Janaba sexual impurity this can only be lifted by ghusl and this can be minor such as when you pass wind or answer the call of nature and this can be uplifted by performing wudu and wudu is our topic for today the eighth hadith is one of the great hadith with us so who would volunteer to read this hadith please kalim wudu humran the freed slave of usman said I saw Usman, may Allah be pleased with him, calling for a vessel of water and poured water over his hands three times and then washed them. Then he put his right hand in the vessel and rinsed his mouth and cleaned his nose. Then he washed his face three times and his hands up to the elbows three times. Then wiped his head, then washed his feet three times. Then he said that the messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had said he who performed ablution like this ablution of mine and offered two rakahs of prayer without allowing his thoughts to be distracted all his previous sins would be expiated very well this hadith of Humran one of the servants of Uthman ibn Affan may Allah be pleased with him the third caliph of Islam and twice the son-in-law of the Prophet والسلام, as he married to two of his daughters may Allah be pleased with them all he is describing to us how the Prophet والسلام, performed wudu and if you go to look at what he had done you will find it to be in compliance with the Quran because in Surah Al-Ma'idah, chapter 5, verse 6, Allah describes to us how we should perform wudu. And as you recall in previous episodes, we said that there are six pillars of wudu. Is this correct? So, let's count them once again. The first pillar, washing the face, Abdurrahman, second pillar, hands or rinsing the mouth or the nose no see you have to when studying fiqh be in full concentration it's like playing badminton if you blink when he's serving you lose and in fiqh every single word counts and that is why you study the fundamentals of fiqh usul fiqh which is a very serious science that teaches you the meaning and how to use each word and that is why they have general meaning and they have specific meaning and they have what is known as mutlaq and muqayyad and all these terminologies refer to the usage of the word and what it means we go back again concentrate we have six pillars of wudu without any of them your wudu is invalid that is why when we say pillar also, this is studied in fundamentals of fiqh. When you verify something to be a pillar, without it, the whole building collapses. So, pillars of prayer, rukur. If I forget to make rukur, if I do not bow once in a four rak'ah prayer, so I did only three, but one of them I forgot, I immediately went into prostration. Is my prayer valid? My prayer is invalid. Unless I make up for that during the prayer. Why? because a pillar has gone so we go back again four of the pillars are mentioned in the Quran washing the face which includes rinsing the mouth and inhaling and blowing your nose washing your arms 
till the elbow. So saying that washing the hands is not sufficient because this is a hand. And in Arabic, this also can mean to be the hand, which is the full arm. So you have to be specific. And that is why when Allah tells us in the Quran that the punishment of a person who steals is to chop his hand, to chop his hand, to chop his hand, to chop his hand, you have to know. Because the word in Arabic may carry all of these meanings. So it is essential that you know what you meant by this. And for an example, you know the word Ain in Arabic, what does it mean? I, Ain means I. However, it has other meanings. For example, the letter Ain, which begins with A. My name is Asim. So the first letter in my name is Ain. It means the organ itself, the eye. It means a spring of water. Aynun jariyah. Fiha aynun jari in the Quran, Surah Al Ghashiyah. It also means a spy. I sent a ayn. I sent an eye to go and find out what's happening. And it also means the entity of things. Aynu shay. The entity of this thing and not this thing. So the word itself has a number of meanings. So you have to be in fiqh very practical and very specific. When you say washing the hands, I did that in the beginning. No, it's washing the arms up to the elbows. And in the Quran, it refers to aidi. Aidiyakum ila al marafiq. And the third pillar, wiping our heads and then washing our feet to the ankles. up to the ankles. Number five, order. What do we mean by order? I cannot start with my feet and then my face. I have to go face, arms to the elbows, head, and then uh, feet to the ankles. And number six is the continuity or the sequence in the sense that I don't leave a big gap. Leaving a gap means that I'm not being in sequence and then I have to do it all over again. So these are the pillars. If you look at the hadith, you'll find the pillars. But you'll find also an added value, which is the sunnah. What do you mean by sunnah? Things if you do, you're rewarded. If you don't do, you are not sinful. You're not sinful. So let's go on to look at the hadith of Uthman. First of all, the first thing he did was to pour water and washing his hands three times. Why? We said that before, that this is so that you are able to enter your hands into the vessel. If you don't wash your hand, maybe your hands have dirt, germs, they're not clean, smelly. By entering your hands into the vessel before washing it, this would not make you feel good and would not make those coming behind you to use the water feel good neither. So he did this, and this is a sunnah. The Prophet is the one who did it because he's describing to us what the Prophet did, alayhi salatu wasalam. Then he got his hand, right hand, in the water, took a scoop, made rinsing the mouth, inhaling and blowing, and he did not tell us here how many times. So we are assuming it is once, because afterwards he says, then he washed his face three times. So now we know that this is different than washing the face. I don't know. Let's assume it's once and washing the face three times. Then he washed his hands up to the elbows three times. Okay, so three times again. Then he wiped his head, then washed his feet three times. Wiping the head how many times? He did not say. So we assume that it is once. And then he said, I have seen the Prophet والسلام, perform wudu exactly as I've showed you. And then he said, whoever performs wudu like this and prays two rak'ahs without talking to himself, without allowing the thoughts to be distracted, Allah would forgive all of his previous sins. Very easy. Has anybody tried it? Has anybody tried these two rak'ahs? Were you successful? Not always. Well, 
it is very difficult. It needs training. It cannot come from the first time. It is exactly when you go to the gym and try to bench press 100 kilograms. You cannot even lift it. But if you start with 5 kilograms, and over the year you build it up to 30, and over the 3-4 years you build it up to 100, it will come. Likewise, if you try this prayer once, five times, a hundred times, a thousand times, maybe. Why? Because every time you're fighting yourself and those who fight, who struggle, Allah would guide them. Allah said in the last verse of Surah Al-Ankabut, وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِينَا لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ سُبُولُنَا Those who struggle in our cause, in Allah's cause, we will guide them. So you struggle, you will attain this. And the reward is not something to be taken lightly. All of your previous sins are forgiven. So I think it's worth trying every now and then. So these are two rakahs. Our topic is not these two rakahs. Our topic is wudu, ablution. So we will go back to some of the lessons that can be learned from this hadith just after the break. So stay tuned. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah and welcome back. The hadith of Uthman, may Allah be pleased with him, regarding wudu, has a lot of lessons we could learn from. Among them, first, that all beautiful things, we have to begin by using the right hand. And that is why he did this when performing wudu. First of all, he washed his hands and then entered his right hand rather than entering both hands. And one of the things that scholars differed upon is the issue of turning the water in your mouth and inhaling and blowing your nose. Is it mandatory? Is it part of your wudu or not? The majority of scholars stated that this is not part of the wudu and it is not mandatory. However, other scholars said that it is mandatory. Imam Ahmed, may Allah have mercy on his soul, said that it is mandatory in wudu simply because the Prophet had never ever left it. There is not a single report that he performed wudu without making madmada and istinshaq and istinthar, turning the water in his mouth, rinsing his mouth and inhaling and blowing his nose. And secondly, because of the hadith of Laqit ibn Saburah, may Allah be pleased with him, when the Prophet told him, exaggerate in turning the water in your mouth and inhaling and blowing your nose unless you're fasting. So he's telling him, do that and do that quite well, meaning that it is something that's mandatory. Now, having said that, using the right hand side, I'll give you a scenario and tell me if my wudu is correct or not. I went to the bathroom, turned the faucet on, made madmada, istinsha, istinthar, and washed my face. Washed my hands to the elbows, wiped my head and my feet. Is my wudu correct or not? Who, those who say correct, raise your hands. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven. Those who say it's not correct, raise your hands. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You've raised your hands twice? So you are with or without, and it's not correct. Okay. Those who say it is not correct, why? Can you justify? Kelly? You did not wash your hands in the beginning. Yes, I did not wash my hands in the beginning. Does this have to do anything with wudu? Is it mandatory? Is it a pillar? Is it a sunnah? Always classify things in their perspective so that I can identify this is wajib, mandatory, this is a pillar, this is a sunnah. So if I do not do the sunnah, no problem. I lose the reward, but it's no problem. If I do not do the wajib intentionally, there's a problem. If I don't do the pillar, then there is no ibadah. So let's go back to the pillars of wudu. First of all, the first four mentioned in the Quran. I did exactly what Allah mentioned in the Quran in chapter 5, verse 6. O oh, you who believe, if you want to pray, what do you do? 
wash your face. And this is what I did. Therefore, my wudu was 100% correct. Those who said my wudu was correct, they get full mark. Those who don't, next year, inshallah. I'll give you another scenario. I went, washed my hand three times, washed my face, inhaled and blew my nose, and turned the water in my uh, mouth, and then continued the rest. My wudu is correct or not correct? Yes, ma'am. He thinks he's correct, but it's not part of the sunnah. Who shares the opinion? Who? Okay, nobody. Who says that it's incorrect? One. And the rest, they are undecided yet, undetermined. The question is, is it correct or not? The answer is, it is correct. Why? The sequence is not there yet. The sequence is there. Face. And this is all face. Whether you begin by washing, or you begin by turning the water in your mouth, or begin by inhaling and blowing your nose. All these three are the same. So there's no problem. Understood? No problem. Third and last scenario. I went to the bathroom, said Bismillah, washed my hand three times, and I'm going to describe to you exactly what I'm going to do. And then, water, mouth, nose, my face, the water, my left hand, my right hand, head, then my feet. Wudu is correct or incorrect? Those who say correct, raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, those who say incorrect, raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six. Tell me why. Was it because the left hand was used first? Yes, I did the left hand first and then the right. But this is again sunnah, not a pillar and not mandatory. So I can begin with the left and the right then, and left foot and right foot. Is the sequence, is the order correct? Yes, face, arms, head, and legs. But I switch the arms instead of right, I began with the left. And that is why Ali, may Allah be pleased with him, said, I care less if I begin with the left or with the right. Because it follows the sequence of the Quran. So it is a sunnah to begin with the right, but if you uh, begin with the left, it is not a problem. However, I made another mistake while doing the wudu that makes my wudu, according to a lot of scholars, not valid. Yes. You didn't do your ears for some reason. I didn't even wipe my head. I said, continue the... No, no, the ears, uh, uh, that's uh, it's not, it's not an issue. Sure. Any ideas? Okay, just to save time, the biggest problem that a lot of Muslims don't pay attention to is that when they wash in the beginning their hands three times, when it comes to washing the arm, they skip the palm of their hands. So they wash from the wrist to the elbows. What about the palm? So we washed it in the beginning. Ah, but washing it from the beginning is a sunnah, is not part of the order. So you actually did not complete your wudu. Imagine how many people are doing this. You, do you see it in the, do you do it yourself? You wash in the beginning, after washing the face, the water is coming down, you just wash from here to there. And then you wash from here to there. What about the palms? I don't know have to, I wash them in the beginning. The order is important and that is why when you wash your hand in wudu, you have to wash the palm of your hand. And part of the sunnah is to wash the inside of your fingers with your other fingers and to the elbows. So this is quite important. Does anybody have any questions regarding this point? Well, uh, we go on. Uh, Sheikh, from the beginning till the end, if you can just classify what are the pillars and the mandatory and the sunnah. We are getting confused with the mandatory and the sunnah. Okay. Pillars are clear. It is an issue of dispute about the mandatory things because as we've said, have stated, the majority consider that the nose and the mouth are voluntary, not mandatory. And the most authentic opinion, it is mandatory. So the sunnah is that you begin with saying Bismillah. Not saying Bismillah does not nullify your wudu. Your wudu is intact. But 
it is of a lesser grade and degree. And a lot of the times people say, where do we say Bismillah? If we're in the bathroom, can we say verbally Bismillah? Can we? Now people are hesitant in answering. Yes, we can say Bismillah unless it is the place where we answer the call of nature. And even if it's in the place where we answer the call of nature, it is different than the place that the companions used to answer the call of nature. Why? At the time of the Prophet, they did not have any running water. They did not have any toilets. So they had to go to the desert or out of the city to answer the call of nature. So the dirt, the filth, the feces, the urine was there. Except for those who buried it. And I don't think that a lot of people cared about that because nature will take its course. Nowadays, our bathrooms are not like this. On the contrary, our bathrooms in our homes sometimes are even more clean than our living rooms. Because everybody is careful that, to wash it, to have it in, in perfect hygiene, and to put detergents, and, and there is no filth. All the najasa is gone. So that's why some scholars even say that it is permissible to say Bismillah in a loud voice. But to take it in between, it's sufficient for you to move your lips by saying, this is enough. Second of all, washing the hand, this is part of the sunnah. If you don't, if you just immediately go and rinse your mouth and blow your nose and wash your face, it does the job. Third of all, the sequence in the pillar, the order in the pillar, the face, it has three things, mouth, nose, and washing the face. If I start with any of those, it's permissible because the order is sunnah. It's not mandatory in the pillar itself. Thirdly, likewise, when I wash the arms, if I begin with the right, this is a sunnah. If I begin with the left, this is okay. Wiping the head, it has to be once. This is the sunnah. If you do more, you are sinful. Why? Because wiping the head is to minimize the exposure of the head to water. Otherwise, Allah could have ordered us to wash our head, our hair every time. What will happen? You will catch cold 24-7. You will always be sneezing and coughing and having bad illnesses because of this. Allah made it easy only once. What is the sunnah in it? To go back and forward. And the scholars all say that this is a pillar. However, the sunnah is quite obvious. The Prophet always wiped his hair once. To do the ears, the Prophet said, the ears are part of the head in the hadith. So it is not only a sunnah, it becomes mandatory as well. And to wash your feet, this is obvious up to the ankles. This is all the time we have until we meet next time. Fiyamanillah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.